Well, let's now delve further into the effects of the coronavirus on African markets. We're joined by Michael Sudarkasa. He is the Chief Executive Officer at Africa Business Group. Great to have you on the show with us today, sir. Now, we're not quite sure yet to what extent African nations will have to battle the virus uh, in their own countries, given the low numbers the continent is currently seeing. Briefly, uh, what are the biggest worries and threats for African governments uh, right now? What are your thoughts? thoughts on that? I think the biggest threat that uh, African governments have is the fact that we don't know as much as we'd like to know about the virus. So uh, you're right that the cases on the continent have been very few. That's actually puzzled both African and, and non-African scientists to know why um, the uptake. I mean, it's a positive thing. But um, I think the bigger impact is the fact that China is a major trading and investment partner of the continent. And almost all things China seem to have screeched to a halt over the last month. So if you are looking to export products to China, um, that may not be happening at the rate that you'd like. If you need uh, components for your value chain from China, those parts are delayed. And, and that's really had the knock on travel for example, has really taken a hit, both for business and for leisure and tourism. So it's the economic knock-on that I think has governments most concerned. And the fact that while the cases of, of new uh, instances in China has decreased, um, the, the go-ahead really to, to open up the country has not been given, and no one really knows how long that will take. Mm. You're quite right. Uh, China is one of Africa's uh, biggest buyers. Uh, so let's hone into that point. Uh, of course, that means falling Chinese demand in the wake of this outbreak uh, is certainly bound to have an impact on the continent. So what are your thoughts on the extent of the impact it will have on African economies going forward? Well, I think across the board, the projections for 2020 GDP growth on the continent uh, have been scaled down. Um, many of the countries, uh, particularly in Southern Africa, are natural mineral resource producers, um, companies in the oil and gas sector. Um, all of them are really having to reevaluate what 2020 will look like. Um, in West Africa, I was reading there's a, a major infrastructure project that had been allocated uh, to Chinese contractors that's been halted uh, because there's concern about the workers actually potentially infecting others. So it definitely in the infrastructure space, in the uh, oil and gas space, in the mineral space, China also, uh, as I mentioned, are, are major tourists to the continent. Here in South Africa, there's a major um, decline, if you will. Uh, broadly speaking, the mice industry is getting uh, a setback because, again, beyond China, many other places in the world now have the virus. So people are just a bit skittish about bringing together people from all over the world for things that um, in the past they would take for granted and, and happily do. So it's having a, a negative impact, um, hopefully, um, because, again, the, the word uh, in, in terms of following news is that there is uh, the beginning of tests for uh, treatment and uh, vaccination. So we're, we're hopeful, but uh, in the interim, it's, it's definitely a, a tense time around the continent. Right. And as you mentioned, it's not just a China problem, the spread of the virus uh, right now. And as a result, we've seen financial markets uh, globally responding or, or falling quite heavily as a result of the spread of this vi virus. They're now adjusting their repricing assets. Uh, investor sentiment seems to be soaring, uh, especially towards emerging uh, markets. So how are we seeing this impact Africa's currencies, Africa's equities and, of course, African assets? Well, it's not going to be good. Um, one of the challenges that the, the continent has is that um, the markets in the West um, really took a hit last week. Uh, they're somewhat rebounding, as you said, trying to price in for risk. Uh, but on the continent, currencies um, in South Africa, for example, 
In December, the currency was uh, 14 rand to one dollar. Um, it almost touched 15.5 uh, yesterday. So uh, the, that's it's going down. And in the fact that it's going down, you talked about the fact that we are slipping into a recession. Uh, the challenge with South Africa doing poorly, uh, Nigeria is not doing uh, as well as like, is that these countries are regional drivers uh, of economic growth. And so as they are laggard, the whole region has a cold, if you will, um, no puns intended. So it's, a, it's going to be a trying year um, for uh, the many different reasons, but particularly uh, the virus is kind of uh, continuing uh, to slow things down. And the fact that China, who has been a catalyst for the continent for over a decade, uh, will see its economy slow, it has a knock-on effect. Mm. Now, do you think uh, this recent outbreak will uh, impact Chinese and other foreign trade deals uh, with Africa going forward? I really don't think that long-term... Um, this season, if you will, uh, will, will negatively impact um, China-Africa relations. Um, I do think that, though, in the next 12 months, um, even if, if tomorrow uh, a cure was found, there'll be more caution. Um, but I don't think, given the amount of investment, the amount of loans that have been given from China, the volume of trade, that exists that um, countries will, will just decide, no, I'm not going to engage with China. But major infrastructure projects will be slowed. Um, trade uh, in the commodity sector will be slowed. Agricultural sector will be slowed um, right now for the foreseeable future. All right. Well, we're suddenly watching. Many thanks for your insights. That was Michael Sudarkasa. He's the CEO at Africa Business Group.